What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco Delia and today I want to talk about how I edit my Instagram photos. I receive these questions, I think not daily, but weekly for sure. And because my Instagram feel looks kind of particular, looks kind of uh, teal and orangish, I want to make a video on how I edit my Instagram pictures. So. I already made this video, but I wanted to tell you that right now it's changed. So what is the steps to take best Instagram pictures and the steps that I'm using to take them? So before starting, if you don't know me, my name is Marco Delia and during these weeks, I'm trying to reposition myself. So I'm trying to, you see, dress a little bit better because I'm trying to get a little bit more professional and a little bit more business oriented in my videos. So trying to, get ready for every opportunity and for success and preparing you guys for the same thing. So preparing you to not miss a chance, be ready mentally, uh, spiritually, and also financially and physically, of course, for any opportunity. So this is my purpose. And I'm gonna start a challenge uh, during these weeks and probably I'm gonna start some Q and A's trying to reposition myself and slowly change, shift that focus. So let's start with the video. So what's, what are the next, uh, the first steps that I do. First of all, I take the pictures with my iPhone. I try to use the newest iPhone because it has, for me, the best camera. And if I don't use the iPhone, I use the Osmo Pocket, which is a little camera by DJI. It records in 4K and it is very great quality. This is the Osmo Pocket. You can see it here, you can attach it to your phone and this is amazing. This has very great quality and it costs around 300 euros, 200 and something. 300, maybe a little bit more than 300. And then I use my camera. Right now I have a new camera. I'll show you, this is the camera. It's the Sony A6400. So I use this camera with this lens, which is a Sigma 16 millimeter lens. I don't know if you can see it. Well, it's a Sigma 60 millimeters lens with an aperture of 1.4, which means that you can have a great aperture. So the background is blurry and is well and nice for portraits as well. So this is the first step. Second step, I edit my photos. So what do I do depending on if I took it with the camera or with the iPhone? I uh, try to airdrop it whenever I want to edit it. Sometimes I edit with Lightroom on my Mac. Sometimes I use my iPhone. 90% of the time I use my, just my iPhone. For more professional and business pictures, I use Lightroom on my Mac. So what are the steps? I'll show you. Let me see if I can record. There you go, perfect. You go on this side right here. You go on Lightroom, of course. So this is what happens. These are all the pictures that I already posted. Let's try from camera roll. For example, for Instagram, yes, I have a full, whenever I take a picture, I have a full, uh, folder in which I post all the pictures that I would post uh, on Instagram so that I want to edit. For example, let's take, yes, here in Malta, this is where when I was in Malta. Let's take this one, for example, or maybe, yeah, this one. Let's take this one. So you press this and there you go. So what are the steps? First of all, crop for Instagram needs to be four by five and then I have a preset. So there you go, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I had a lot of presets before made by me, so they were made by me. But the point is, I have no idea why, but the Lightroom on my app, on my iPhone, maybe because I was trying the beta of the new update on my iPhone, got deleted. So all my presets were deleted. So this is like the reminiscence of the, the, the only presets that I was using the most. So I just take this preset and then I uh, adjust for every single picture. So I'll show you what are the settings for the pre this preset, which is like a teal and orangish a little bit less saturated with a lot of whites, a lot of blacks, and that's it. So I'll show you. Let's start with this basic, which is for the light, exposure 0.14, for this I'll go a little bit higher, 
contrast 15 I would go 10 highlights 20 I will go a little bit more shadows I would go yeah around 18 whites I would go more I actually put a lot of whites in the picture and a lot of black so I would go like this I love to be very contrasty and very not that much saturated so on the curves I just put a little bit of here one point and two points one a little bit down and this one a little bit higher oh sorry so right here so that makes this s and that's it i go on the colors i normally make them a little bit on this side so the temperature is a little bit colder normally and i took the vibrance around 20 15 I normally took around 15. I don't touch the saturation because I don't like the effect of the saturation. Red, I normally leave it like that. The orange, I normally take it on 10 plus 10 saturation and on around minus 20, sometimes minus 18, 16. The yellow, of course, if I want to make a teal and orange, I have to reduce the yellow. So I'll, it will be uh, these kinds of orange. So on the hue, I would put it on the orange. And on the saturation, I normally, I sometimes post it like that, so it's zero yellow at all. But in this picture particularly, I like it, so I would put it at minus 20 and a little bit more luminous, so I would go around plus 10. Green, I normally leave it like that. If I don't like it in the picture, I just go zero. Blue, I normally put it a little bit up and a little bit more on the teal and orange. You see, so it's a little bit more teal this side. I don't like it that saturated and a little bit more luminescence. Saturation on the uh, purple instead, I normally go almost zero or I reduce the saturation because I don't like it that much. On effects, I normally leave it like that, but maybe a little bit of clarity because I'll show you the next steps. I use another app for this process. So this is the first step and then I export Remember, export as, you need to choose image quality 100%, JP, dimension largest available dimension, because it's the best quality. So you go save image, and then the second app that I use is Snapseed. So is this app right here, the one with the green leaf, Snapseed. Okay, so same thing, open, I retouch it again, one final touch. So let's go with this. What I do is, first of all, tonal contrast to make them look similar. I go plus 45, I go plus 35, and I go plus 45. And this gives a, a look to all the other pictures in my feed, very similar. And then you see that my it's all cool, but for me, my skin, etc., is way too dark and way too oranges. So I go for portrait. I normally go 25. I don't like the skin smoothing. And uh, eye clarity is okay. That's it. And then I would go a little bit brighter. Not conscious. Saturation a little bit less here. It really depends on the picture, on this thing. Ambience, I normally go very low. So minus 30 sometimes that's enough for today highlights more shadows here a little bit more warmth a little bit colder until i reach the level i want and i'd go for where is it yes yeah, selective and i would go for my face and my all the color basically of my skin make it brighter and structure it a little bit so that it pops out of the screen and even everything all my image more brightness more structure and more contrast my backpack all the accessories so they pop up of the screen this is really helpful for example when you have also some products that you are uh, that you are promoting for example because they pop up and you can see them very clearly and it's much better so you see last thing my my arm brighter structure and contrast and i don't touch the saturation only here i adjust a little bit less saturation because i look very orangish 
and that's it. This is the picture. Sometimes here, for example, you see, I try to expand it a little bit on this side. So if it doesn't look bad, I can use it like this. Yeah, this doesn't look good, <laughs> but to give you the idea, <laughs> this is what I do. And then that's it. Even here, export, you can choose here in the settings, the best settings for export, JPEG from a quality 100%. You have to always choose that. And that's it. So this is the second step. Now, last app, I use this last app, which is called Feeder, but there are a lot of them. Feeder basically can show you how the picture goes here. For example, you add squares and you choose the latest picture and you see how it is. And I think it looks great. So this is it. This is my personal Instagram feed. So that's it guys. This is how I edit my videos, at, sorry, how I edit my Instagram pictures. So basically it's kind of a teal and oranges, less saturated, a lot of white and more black kind of picture. And I really like it. For me, it works in the beginning. It was very, very saturated and very teal and oranges. Right now it's a little bit more, it's more on the uh, normal. It's quite normal in the colors. Another couple tips. First of all, whenever I post a new IGTV or whenever I post a new Reels on Instagram, I try to leave it on the grid, even if it ruins the grid for a while, for 12 to 24 hours so that I can remove it. Because for 12 to 24 hours, the Instagram will algorithm will push it uh, to see it for other people. So after those 12 to 24 hours, I just remove it from the grid. So even IGTV videos and reels, I leave it there for some time and then just remove them. But pay attention guys, not let yourself create less content because of looking for perfections. I wrote down here, remember that being too perfectionist with your feed is not a good idea. It's cool and nice for companies to have an high quality matching feed, but it's not necessary at all. Since the message you spread through content is way, way, way more important. So that's it guys, these are my tips on how to edit the videos, so to how to edit the pictures. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you have any questions, I'll just reply, any DMs. Oh, and whenever I post a new picture, a new reel, a new IGTV, something new on Instagram, I always go back on the previous picture, previous reel, previous IGTV and reply to all the comments after posting a new one. And I post the hashtags under the comments of the new picture. So that's it. And post it, of course, in my story so that people can see it. Hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video. Peace. I've been flying from town to town.